There are three popular lies about labels that artists have to get out of their head if they wanna make sure they understand not just labels, but the industry as a whole, because labels really control the behavior of most of these other characters as well. So let's get into lie numero uno, and that's this idea of all label artists have huge budgets, it doesn't exist. I promise you it does not exist to the level that you think, all right? This is what I mean, and please understand, this is coming from Insight, working with multiple label artists, probably hundreds at this point, right? And not only right, working with multiple, I'm talking about some that are significant in terms of name, all right? And then I'll tell you why as well. All right, so first, you will commonly see a 4,000 budget, all right, 5,000 budget for a label artist. That's what you will see. And I'm not saying that's not a lot of money at all because for many of y'all, that is a lot of money. But most people are assuming that every single label artist has like a $100,000 budget, right? Or $50,000 budget, right? And that's just not a thing. And then you hear like these million dollar budgets and things like that. That is so rare. I promise you, it is so, so rare. And a lot of it comes from the bigger thing, which is number two. Even if you have a big marching marketing budget, right? Understand the lie is the marketing budget that gets presented to you when you sign these label deals, distribution deals, all right? And even in some cases, management deals, depending on how things are creatively set up, all right? And you need to know this, this lie. Why? Because this is how it usually works. And I've seen this happen time and time again to artists that we've helped get into a situation with a deal or just homies. Pretend that you just got a deal, right? And this deal was for 100K for your marketing budget. That's a nice little amount, all right? Especially your indie artist, you have been grinding it, you know, doing $100 at a time, $1,000 at a time, great amount. But imagine when it's time to get to marketing, they say, all right, cool. We'll let you know if we agree with this marketing of campaign or not. You have all these ideas, but the label's only gonna do it if they agree. I don't care that you think that this idea to pay this influencer is a good idea. Eh, we don't believe in that. So now you find yourself selling the label to spend money that you think they should spend. You understand your vision and how it might help you navigate to where you wanna go, but they still aren't opening up the purse strings because they don't believe. So it's not really your money. It's money you have access to. And that's the biggest lie that artists don't quite understand. Oftentimes, it's not your money, it's money you have access to. Because we just hear this whole thought in this um, common story of, oh, well, yeah, you do have all this money. You have a million dollar deal and you're just spending it poorly. We talk about artists spending it poorly. No, 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 no. And a lot of times artists aren't even spending this money poorly. They don't even have access to it in the first place, all right? One, someone might have to agree to actually run the campaign. Here's another scenario that might happen there is two, Okay, you have a 100,000 marketing budget, but I'm gonna let you only have access to 10 to spend however you want to, right? And then if like, we like how things are going, we're gonna spend the other $90,000 on some things that we think will help out, some things that we approve on, possibly our marketing team um, or our ads team spending the budget. You get what I'm saying? So that's the second scenario where you actually do have access directly to a chunk and you can spin it because you kind of have it, even though it's still them giving um, access to it. They might not just send it over to your account. That's the second scenario. But here, here's the third one to keep, in, um, to keep in account. And this is the bigger picture why it's a lie in terms of your marketing budget um, for deals. So let me walk through it again. Number one, you have to pitch for every dollar that gets spent. Scenario number two, you have to pitch for dollars to get spent, but you do have access to a certain portion that you don't have to do that with, right? And you might even be able to do something with that initial bit, right? Get a little spark going and then knock it out of the park and then convince the label to like pour more money in. That's a lot of scenarios and it's unfortunately maybe the most positive scenario you typically see, but here's the third one. The third one can actually still be a part of either of those scenarios. And this is the biggest lie, I swear to you. Let's pretend you have a 300,000 marketing budget. 
I've seen artist after artist go into a deal where they might have that amount of money. And when the deal is over, all of that money didn't get spent. You had a $300,000 deal and only $50,000 got spent on your marketing, right? And I'm talking about 300,000 marketing budget. I don't want to say like that the rest of that money was accounted to um, to go for other stuff. I'm talking about scenarios where you only got access to a portion of your marketing budget that got spent, whether it was the label or you, throughout the entire process. And now it's a year later, two years later, the deal's been over and you're just never going to see that $300,000 number that actually sold you on going with them in the first place, whether it was a distributor or a label. I got to really continue to emphasize that because like I said, labels right, dictate how people move in the rest of the industry. Other people just become versions of labels because the services kind of are, are the same. And now when people decide, well, how do I build my leverage or add more to what I'm doing? Well, then you start doing, oh, well, marketing services or publishing or admin. Like people become versions of labels and everybody starts to see the game similarly, right? So do know this, you can have a deal and not only don't get the opportunity to spin it poorly, <laughs> right? And, and But people will blame you. How did you not get successful if you, you know, oh, he must have wasted all his, his money. He had a big deal and he's still not popping. No, you didn't even get a chance to spin it poorly, all right? And you might have ended the deal and not spent it all of your own, uh, all of your own money, period. It's kind of like being like in more co in corporate a lot of times. And again, it doesn't have to be a corporate label situation. So please be aware of that one. I spent the most time on that one because that's like one of the biggest ones that artists just, you just don't see until you go through it. It's like, bro, I just had a $70,000 deal for this single and now the, the, the stuff is over and I only got to spend 5K of it. And I don't understand, by the way, how that happens. Maybe I could have a lawyer on because I still don't understand how that happens. It's like, bro, but I thought that was his money. How can... He, how is it so common that artists just never see their money at all? All right. The third lie that I want to discuss here is most labels aren't as predatory as you think, but the ones that aren't require a reality check. What do I mean by that? Hey, just want to drop this quick mention. If you're looking for help in blowing up your music and your career as a whole this year, at the beginning of every year, we open up to find new artists that we want to work with and continue to grow throughout the year which has resulted in many of the big moments that you hear us talk about. So if this time we've opened up where you'll be able to see how we approach things from ground zero, digging into your brand identity, translating that into content, advertising, and full-blown campaigns that result in streams and real fans. And it's only $1 at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. I'll put a link in the description below. But beyond that process, we actually have ways to speak, get to know you, watch you grow throughout your process. So we can lean in and offer extra advising on how to navigate what you're going through in real time. So if you want some real help without having to sign your life away, check it out at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash 30 days. Either way it goes, best of luck to you and your career. The third lie that I want to discuss here is most labels aren't as predatory as you think, but... The ones that aren't require a reality check. What do I mean by that? Why would the non-predatory labels require a reality check? And by, again, I'm just going to use labels as a catch-all term, but there's so many other people you could do deals with. The reality check is you need to understand business to do business with people. And what happens oftentimes with artists, this is a lot more on the artist side than the label or distributor or whoever side, when, you, when, when an artist does business with somebody, they don't quite understand the incentives on the other side of the table. That hurts you when you're making a deal, but also hurts you in terms of being a good partner for a deal and managing your own expectations for a deal and what the partner should do. What do I mean by this? Well, a lot of the non-predatory labels, right, or scenarios, they might just do a deal based on your music and your music alone, right? They're profiting from all the different types of royalties that come from your music directly. All right, cool. What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that, but y'all know how little Spotify pays, right? Y'all know how little Apple Music pays, right? Deezer, Amazon Music. 
So imagine if I'm a label, right? A company and I'm investing in somebody and I know how little these streaming platforms pay. And that's one of the primary ways that artists make money. And if I don't have a piece of your touring, if I don't have a piece of your merch, right? If I don't have a piece of your publishing, if I have no ownership of your masters, think about it. That's a tough equation to get your money back. Because even if I start getting you popping and I invest this money in you and you go from 100,000 streams to 5 million streams, 5 million streams is how much money, right? How much money is that? Think about it. Do the math. It can depend on the streaming platform that you're looking at, but that could easily only be, what, $15,000 or something. I don't know. Like, it's not much more than that. And if I put 100K in you and like money in you to get there, what am I waiting on? Now I'm banking on I made 15K um, what in three months, and hopefully I can keep making that money back. Right. And at some point I get to profit. It's a hard deal. Now, why am I walking through this? Because I'm only involved in this one part of the deal. That leads me to say if I'm a label. Right. And I'm not being predatory and I'm not just taking so much of all these other pieces that I'm not involved that in. It also means I don't care about that other stuff like that. I would love the best for you. I want you to have uh, like a great brand. And I want you to sell all the merch in the world because all that comes with being a bigger artist, which hopefully means you stream better. But from a business on the paper standpoint, I don't care about any of that stuff because I don't get any of that stuff. All right. And the problem becomes, well, yeah, you as a manager might want to focus on increasing the, the show rate. Right. Increasing the amount of people who pop up to your shows. You as a manager might want to do something that increases the merch sales. All of these things are valid. They make sense. Right. And I'll say you as a manager, but of course you as an artist, too. But just know me as a label, I, I want to invest all of the money or most of the money that I'm giving you in something that's going to impact streaming. The thing that I actually make money from. Get that. And here's an example. Right. Homie of mine, and this is when it first like super clicked. He's arguing. He wanted to target a different country, right? Um, to to boost the streams of the artist because there were so many people that were loving him. And I mean, the results were crazy in terms of the targeting from that country versus the primary country, which was the US, right? So he wanted to triple down in that space. What was the issue? Well, the person who gave money in that instance said, Bro, I don't care about that. Like, you're trying to do that because you see the ability to go out there and do shows. You're trying to um, build a strategy that might bring in more merch and really lean into those fans. But one, I'm not making money from the merch. I'm not making money from the shows. But check this out. In terms of ROI, the U.S. pays out way more per stream on the streaming platforms than that other country. So pouring money and that, and that makes it way harder for me to make my money back. It makes sense, right? It just does. It doesn't mean I don't want the best for you as a whole, but with the dollars that I'm giving you, all right, I need to make sure that the highest chance is there to get the money I need back just from that money alone. I'm trying to get the ROI off, off of that money spent. Not, hey, I got you to this level and then hopefully somebody else gives you some more money and then I can make my money back. I'm trying to get my money back off of the money I spent on you. All right. So that's the lie um, that artists don't understand that, yes, there are predatory labels, but most labels, distributors and these companies aren't anywhere near as predatory as it used to be. It's not like that. But what does become a huge divide is the mismanaged expectations that they have, artists have, for a label or partner situation because you're thinking about yourself as a whole at all times, as you should. But they're thinking about the part that they benefit from. The worst scenario I saw this, I'm not, not, not the worst, not the worst, but another scenario I saw this, um, but it was kind of bad, and I'll tell you why. The manager had an artist. The artist actually came to us first. 
and then brought the manager on the call. And I'm talking to the artist and manager, and I realized the manager came from like publishing, songwriting, sync type of world, right? Cool. It's nice to have a manager that knows that game and can make that money. But the artist didn't want to just make sync money, didn't want to just, you know, do songwriting type deals and things like that. The artist wanted the whole dream. They wanted the, the image. They wanted the fans. They wanted to be on stage, ah, all that stuff. Manager didn't really care about that. And I could tell that from the call. And I was just like, Ugh, I don't know if she knows or, she, or if the manager knows yet either. But there's a little conflict here. This ain't going to go too hot. And unless one of them change in terms of their goal, about a year from now, I'm not going to be surprised if they're not working together. Maybe two years. Hopefully the sooner the better. Because they had two completely different goals. This manager, to achieve their goal with that artist, that artist didn't need to be big. It didn't have to ha have a front-facing brain at all. That um, damn near. But for the artist, <laughs> yeah, that's what they wanted. And the manager was moving completely different. And you saw that in terms of the type of campaigns they wanted us to run. So just know those three lies do exist. Just a quick review. A lot of label budgets are way smaller than you think for big artists. I could go in way more detail, but I'm not. Label deal, numbers are a lie. That number that you get when you get a deal, right? A marketing budget, it's not necessarily that. But there's a lot of things that we can do to help move that along. I'll make a separate video about that possibly. Um, and then lastly, most labels aren't as predatory as you think, but the ones that aren't require a reality check. If you like this information, right, videos like this, please subscribe. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I think the other artists appreciate it because it just inspires me to keep making more videos and putting these out there. So that is it. And watch the next video. We're doing a whole playlist. For those of y'all who don't know, this is what I'm doing every Saturday this year. And I'm now collecting a playlist of Saturday videos. Peace.